case at 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. A year ago, Michael Enoch's murder trial ended with a hung jury. A mistrial was declared and a new trial ordered. And that new trial ended today with a not guilty verdict. Paul Venema there for closing arguments. <laughs> Everyone here wants justice, but justice is not convicting an innocent man. 35-year-old Michael Enoch's lawyer insisted that the wrong man is on trial for the murder of 29-year-old Daryl Gentry. Gentry was shot to death in this apartment complex parking lot. Witnesses testified that Enoch argued with Gentry. He was angry about a heated argument between Gentry and Gentry's girlfriend. He pulled a gun, they testified, and shot Gentry twice. Those witnesses got it wrong, according to Gentry's lawyer. I challenge you, I summon you to stand up, stand up for what's right, because this is wrong. This is not wrong, prosecutors argued, and we gave you credible witnesses to prove it. They noted that among the witnesses who identified Enoch was Gentry's girlfriend, who testified that she was just a few feet away from Enoch when he fired that fatal shot. She identified him to police that night and again in court. Some of these defenses are predictable. Oh, it wasn't me, got the wrong guy. It's an identity issue at this point. She argued that this was a case of a man with anger issues. He couldn't control his temper. Michael Enoch came downstairs trying to prove something, and he shot Daryl Gentry. Referencing that defense plea for justice, Miller said that justice demands a guilty verdict. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. Yesterday's Air Force plane crash highlighted the inherent dangers of flying, the cause of the crash just released by the U.S. Air Force. The T-6 trainer had engine failure at low altitude on final approach, but the crash happened miles away from the base and from the people who live with the air traffic every day. So Garrett Berger headed over to the area around JBSA Randolph to find out what some of the neighbors were thinking. For more than 30 years, Jose Ramirez and his wife have lived in Universal City few hundred yards away and definitely within earshot of JBSA Randolph. It's the sound of freedom to me. An Air Force veteran, Ramirez isn't concerned about the possibility of aviation accidents. And Tuesday's crash hasn't changed that. I've had people in a car crash right here at this corner. Yeah. It, it's the same thing. Reached by phone, the mayor of nearby Shirts isn't any more worried than he was before. Yeah, they actually fly over my house rather frequently and uh, my concern level is uh, is rather low. The mayor says Shirts limits the kind of development that can happen on their side of the base in what are called accident potential zones, or APZs, where accidents are most likely to happen. Just to make sure that as few people as possible uh, are potentially in harm's way. Ramirez and the other folks we talked to in Universal City appeared to live near the edge of one of the APZs on the Air Force's map. That isn't to say some didn't have concerns, especially after yesterday. Sometimes we don't know he's going to fall down over here in our house or I don't know. I think, oh my God, that could have happened here in my backyard. I don't know. I just don't even want to go there. We just pray to God that never happens, but life happens. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. New at 6, opioid abuse in our country and right here in the Alamo City is described as an epidemic. It's why the city and county came together more than a year ago to create the Joint Opioid Task Force. But as Bill Barajas explains, the question is, is that working? Bill was with health officials as they talked to the city council about combating the problem. Just a real quick look at how did we get here. Opioids have been a problem for decades. Bear County ranks third in per capita rates of deaths from opioid overdoses. At the beginning of the epidemic was that it was, um, lar the, the overdose deaths were largely due to prescription opioids and were largely due or largely seen in the um, 40 and 50 year old population. Um, as the epidemic has progressed, what we're seeing is that among the younger population, they're more likely to die from an opioid overdose caused from heroin or fentanyl. That's why the joint opioid overdose 
Death Prevention Task Force was created to prevent deaths. They're now doing their part to combat the problem. We have systems in place now to address access to naloxone, um, to improve provider education, to improve community education, and to help people um, access treatment services. The task force is made up of more than 30 members, including first responders, healthcare experts, policymakers, and pharmaceutical professionals. The plan to also arm SAPD with a nasal spray that reverses the effects of an overdose. It's called naloxone. Every single police and every single SAPD police officer with a badge by the end of December will have been trained in administering naloxone and will uh, have access to it. The task force says it doesn't yet have numbers on the amount of deaths since its creation, but hope to have some soon. The task force has operated through federal funding. So far, we've received $11 million. It was all federal funding. Um, some of the federal funds went to the state and then, then got dispersed to San Antonio, and some of it came directly to San Antonio. Bill Barajas, KSAT 12 News. A 34-year-old man facing charges tonight after police say he shot at his girlfriend led, and then led them on a chase. Juan Kilpatrick charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, retaliation, felon in possession of a firearm, and evading arrest, among other charges. Police say it all began around 10.30 last night over on the south side along Running Horse near Old Pearsall Road. We're told Kilpatrick fired several shots from a rifle at his girlfriend's truck while she was inside of it. She was not hurt. Kilpatrick sped off, leading officers on a pursuit to a cornfield on Old Pearsall Road. From there, police say he jumped out of the car into the cornfield, and police, assisted by canines, were able to track him down at a trailer park where they found the rifle on the ground, but no sign of him. They finally found him in a parking area across from the trailer park after getting word of a car break-in. His car, which was reported stolen, was recovered and impounded. After a couple of months on the run, a high-risk sex offender out of Kerr County is back behind bars in Houston. 53-year-old Jerry Don Sieb walked away from a Houston halfway house back in July. He'd been on parole after serving time for a conviction of indecency with a child in Kerr County. Sieb had been one of the state's most wanted sex offender fugitives shortly after his escape. News of his arrest posted this morning on the Kerrville Police Department's Facebook page. Details on where authorities tracked him down were not immediately available. San Antonio fire investigators trying to determine what sparked a house fire on the west side this morning. A call coming in around 1115 for the fire in the 1500 block of Southwest 18th Street. Fire crews able to knock down the flames, which were told started in a bedroom. Officials say the damage is estimated about $10,000 and was most likely due to smoke and water. A neighbor suffered a cut on their arm after breaking a window on the home, trying to make sure there was no one inside that house during the fire. The University of Texas launching a peanut butter parking campaign once again to benefit the San Antonio Food Bank. Students are allowed to pay parking citations by donating peanut butter. UTSA says a 20-ounce jar of peanut butter costs around $5, and students are asked to donate close to the amount of the citation that they get. Peanut butter is the number one demand and helps to fight hunger in South, Southwest Texas. We did ask them, what, is the, what are the top things that you need? And they told us the number one thing that they always need is the peanut butter donations. Um, it's got a long shelf life. Um, it's got a lot of nutrition with the peanut butter and the protein, um, the amount of fat that's in the peanut butter. UTSA says the campaign is only held during the first few weeks of the fall semester. Let's take a look at traffic now through our Trans Guide camera here in I-10 in Days of Alla. You can see that there's at least one patrol car. Looks like it's got uh, a vehicle pulled over there. This is the exit for UTSA Boulevard, but that's certainly clogging things up as traffic makes its way past that uh, traffic stop exiting there. This the, again, the camera at I-10 in Days of Alla, but you're looking at the exit here at UTSA Boulevard at I-10 where things are slow going right now. New at 6, not only is preventing child abuse and neglect a top priority for the Children's Shelter, it's trying to reduce the mortality rate among new mothers. The state of Texas is said to have one of the highest in the nation. Jesse Degollado spoke to a young mother who was spared from becoming another sad statistic. Beneath all those unruly curls, an inquisitive 13-month-old on overdrive. Yet after Emerald was born, her mother says her precious jewel almost died. 
her heart would stop, her movement would stop on and off, on and off. Due to her mother's hypertension, but like her daughter, Diamond Fuentes survived. She'd been a homeless teenage mom, diagnosed with anxiety and depression and nowhere to turn. So when I knew that I was struggling, I knew she was going to be struggling. So that's why I was like, nope. I need to do something. She found out about the Nurse Family Partnership. It not only prepares those like Fuentes to be parents, it also is on a life-saving mission. We need to figure out why moms are dying. Moms with risk factors from a lack of prenatal care, stress, and existing health problems that could lead to complications and even death. They may be close to dying. They may have had a stroke during pregnancy or um, had a severe postpartum hemorrhage where they could have died. The Nurse Family Family partnership got Fuentes through her pregnancy and it'll be at their side until Emerald is two years old. You're not alone, we got you. We got your back, like you're not alone. There is reason for hope. The program here in Bear County now has more funding to help more mothers. Yes, now we have five more nurses and we can take another 125 families, this is great. They were thinking about me and my child and for that I'm grateful. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> And taking a live look outside with live cam on this Wednesday evening. Looks like a nice sunset out there with some of those clouds. Yeah, it is. It's a pleasant evening, but we do have a little bit of activity popping up on the radar screen. You can't see it here looking off to the, well, basically west-northwest, but just to the southwest side of Bear County moving toward Vaughn Army and Somerset. Uh, that's where we have a little thunderstorm that popped up. So we'll take a closer look at that in one moment. First of all, the aquifer, boy, it has loved September. It's up 28.6 feet since Labor Day. It has skyrocketed. It's been very good for it. Mold, unfortunately, skyrocketed as well with all this moisture. Very high with a count of over 16,000 ragweed and pigweed on the low end. So a few showers out there to start the evening, then partly cloudy and temperatures falling down through the 80s. We'll talk more about the increasing rain chances for the days ahead coming up. Thank you, Adam. The UTSA Roadrunners football team still looking for their first win and are looking to get it against their I-35 rivals. A preview of this matchup with the Texas State Bobcats this weekend still to come in sports. How does having a knee surgery have anything to do with my brain? Or why would a bladder surgery make any difference to my brain? And a first-of-its-kind program is linking brain health and surgery. How researchers say it will help doctors predict risks. Next at 6. The 96-hour sale is back at Nissan of New Braunfels. 14888 by Altima. 14888. It all ends Monday night at Nissan of New Braunfels. I-35. Except 191 in New Braunfels. Nissan of New Braunfels.com. A West Point graduate, Joseph Kopser served 20 years in the military. Two combat tours in Iraq. Returning home, Kopser founded a successful technology company, creating Texas jobs, and helped build a nonprofit for other veterans to start their own businesses. Joseph Kopser. Officer. I've crossed oceans and deserts to defend our country. Believe me, I can cross an aisle if that's what it takes to solve our problems in Washington. And I'm not afraid to stand up to leaders in both parties to do it. I'm Joseph Kopser, and I approve this message. are the 800,000 people that I represent. Uh, not exactly. Here's how Will Hurd plays it in Washington. Hurd took over $40,000 in campaign cash from the big drug companies and voted for the Washington Republican corporate tax handout, giving the five largest drug companies a $42.7 billion tax cut, while prescription drug costs continue to rise. Washington Will, he's not working for us. Women Vote is responsible for the content of this advertising. The annual enrollment period for Medicare is fast approaching. And at United World Life Insurance Company, a Mutual of Omaha company, we know just how overwhelming it can be to find the right plan. But before we ever offer a solution, we do one simple but powerful thing. We listen. Because the more we understand you, the better we can help you find the plan that's right for you. Visit MutualofOmaha.com to learn more. 
I'm Ted Cruz, and I approve this message. Does Beto O'Rourke think refusing to stand for the national anthem is disrespectful? No, I don't think it's disrespectful. And I can think of nothing more American than to peacefully stand up or take a knee. Texan Tim Lee stepped on a landmine in Vietnam. I gave two legs to this country. I'm not able to stand, but I sure expect you to stand for me when that national anthem is being played. In November, where will you stand? The 96-hour sale is back at Nissan of New Braunfels, 24988 Buys Titan, 24988 It all ends Monday night at Nissan of New Braunfels. I-35, exit 191 in New Braunfels, NissanofNewBraunfels.com. A brand new fleet of buses and SAISD didn't pay a penny for them. I'm Courtney Friedman, and coming up tonight on the Night Beat, how these propane buses are saving the district money and helping the environment. New at 6, about 1 in 6 patients over the age of 60 experience confusion or delirium after elective surgery. When a person becomes delirious, they're more likely to suffer post-operative complications, require longer hospital stays, or even die. Ursula Perry reports now a new program at the University of Florida is working to predict who is at risk and reduce that threat. Debbie Hill loves looking at photos of her late husband, James's adventures. James loved being social, sailing, and serenading his loved ones. My funny Valentine. Oh, Jesus. Sweet, funny Valentine. He was just somebody that, you know, lit up around. But as James got older, he was diagnosed with mild Alzheimer's, which worried Debbie when he went under the knife. The first two times he had surgery, his anesthesia was modified. But the third time when he went under general anesthesia for a broken hip. He was um, delirious. He was confused. Sometimes he hallucinated. It broke my heart to see him not be the person that he you know, I knew him to be. Approximately a third of the individuals were having changes in their memory and thinking after having anesthesia and surgery. Catherine Price runs the Perioperative Cognitive Anesthesia Network, or PICON, where she studies how someone's brain health before surgery can impact their recovery. Before surgery, they run an assessment of tests, such as having patients draw a clock to check attention, working memory, some planning, some prospective memory. If the patient performs poorly, we can alert the anesthesiology and the surgery team and the geriatricians to how they can optimize the person's care. And limit the risk for delirium. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. All right, we saw a live cam earlier, some big clouds out there, those producing anything. Actually, they are. We have some oh. rainmakers out okay. there right now. It's good. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I feel a new vibe here today. <laughs> Where's this going? <laughs> You're leading us. You take us there. Oh, okay. We can do this. <laughs> we, can, we, we, can, we can make it through this no problem. Let's start with a look outside, and I think you can actually pick up one of those rain-producing clouds on the right-hand side of the screen. So let's go through time here. And this is looking down to the south, and on the right side of your screen, see how the sky gets darker? That's one of the downpours off in the distance uh, beyond San Antonio, beyond downtown. But you can see that act action out there. 89, our high temperature today. Smack dab average for the day. All right, so here's the activity. This is the wider view. And as we get closer, you'll see this storm is lit up. Nothing severe, uh, but a lot of lightning with it as it moves on into the I-35 corridor around and south of 1604. So we're looking at the south and southwest side of town here. And we can even time this out for folks, especially into Castroville and whatnot. Let's just go to the current radar, and then we'll time this out for you and take a look at the exact track and when you can expect it in your area. So, for example, it's pushing off to the northwest at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. So we have that calculated into the system in Castroville. You'll likely see that around 7 p.m. I think it may be a little bit earlier than that, than what the computer is saying, but that's what the computer saying a little closer to 7 p.m. So that's that action that we have out there currently. Also, right along 281, let me clear that out of there, right, right near 281, that's where we have some action on the far south side of town as well. Otherwise, we talked about this, well, what's left of this storm. We talked about it at 5. It's really lit up over Freer over the past 
two hours, but uh, just over the past 45 minutes, it really, really weakened as it moved into LaSalle County. Uh, McMullen County, that is. And off to the west, Carrizo Springs, just to the south view, a little bit of lightning and thunder. Good rainbow making weather. You have those downpours off in the distance and lower sun angle. Good for making rainbow. So have the camera ready and just west of Uvalde. Some action there crossing over Highway 90. I do think we'll see a lot more activity on the radar screen by tomorrow afternoon and then especially Friday, Saturday, but it's not going to be continuous, you know, all day rains. Uh, what we're looking at now temperature wise, mostly in the 80s. New Braunfels is at 90, Austin and Gonzales 91 degrees along with Eagle Pass. But for the most part, we're in the 80s locally, some 90s even farther to the north. Actually, 90s stretch all the way into the central plains at this time. But I want to talk about our water vapor imagery and the moisture in the atmosphere. This is basically available moisture that thunderstorms can take and wring out into rain. And where you see these bright colors, such as the purples, greens, and blues, that's where we have more moisture in the atmosphere, especially the mid and upper levels. And notice this upper level high has us fairly dry aloft across most of Texas. And we've been sunny and dry the past couple of days. But it's with the clockwise flow around that high, it's stretching a lot of that moisture up into the northern plains and even as far north as Minnesota and Wisconsin. This pattern's going to modify though, and we're going to get a lot of this moisture coming in off the Pacific. So notice how our moisture content forecast really beefs up the moisture in the air by late tomorrow. So late tomorrow, we're in that high category and we stay there through Friday and into the majority of Saturday. So a lot of available moisture in the air to be squeezed out. And we also have some upper level support that's moving in from the west as well to help produce some scattered showers, thunderstorms. And with that high moisture content, some downpours as well. Uh, so here's a look at those rain chances this week. As for tomorrow, mainly in the afternoon, yeah, spritz or sprinkle in the morning possible, but a few showers and storms in the afternoon scattered in nature, and then becoming a little more numerous, but not continuous Friday and Saturday. And that's why we bump it up to about 60%. So some embedded downpours, and we could pick up a few inches in uh, some parts of South Texas over the next couple of days. Tomorrow morning, 75, 88 by the afternoon, and then mid 80s to take you all the way through the weekend. When plenty more chances, wow. Yeah, there are. Luckily, there will be some big gaps between those showers, but when it rains, it's gonna come down pretty hard. All right, thanks, Adam. Can the Aggies stop the Crimson Tide from rolling all over them? Well, what's interesting is how the Aggies are looking at this game, being it not only the SEC opener, but it's also their first road game. When we come back, it's Aggies at Alabama. How are the Aggies treating this game? They will let us know. And what motivates the Longhorns when they're going up against TCU in their Big 12 opener coming up? Ulysses, his sister Molly, Henry, who's seven. I want to be there with them, but more importantly, I want to anticipate the question that they're going to ask me in the years to come. When everything that mattered to us was on the line, where were you? Let's meet the pettiness, the bigotry, the anxiety that dominates so much of national life today with a courage, a strength, a big heart that could only be born of Texas. I'm Beto O'Rourke, and I approve this message. Cameron McIntosh presents the spectacular new production of Andrew Lloyd Webber's The Phantom of the Opera. Critics are raving. It's bigger and better than ever before. See the phenomenal new production of the world's greatest love story, The Phantom of the Opera. December 6th through the 16th at the Majestic Theater. Tickets on sale at Broadway and San Antonio.com now. tomorrow high temperature of 85 with increasing rain chances later in the day if you've been hurt in a car crash and need protection from the big insurance companies call the Villarreal and Beagle Texas law guns now at 844 law guns friendship is the Texas state motto and our way of being friendly is with dessert 
Get the Texas Blizzard Meal Deal. A hunger buster, fries, a drink, and a mini blizzard, all for $5.99. Eat like a Texan. DQ. There is a real difference in this race for Congress, and it's your health care. Will Hurd voted eight times to raise your premiums and gut your coverage if you have a pre-existing condition. But Gina Ortiz Jones fought by her mother's side as she battled cancer and believes we all deserve health care we can afford. And that can be the difference between life and death for you or someone you love. I'm Gina Ortiz Jones and I approve this message. John killed himself. Perfect John. How does this happen? Why did he do this? It makes no sense. How could he not leave a note? How could I not see it? The truth is that we don't really know each other. I bet you two don't even know what color my eyes are. I always say that everything happens for a reason. The challenge in life is to find that reason. Here comes the rest of us! For the record, Gary, your eyes are hazel and they're magnificent. A Million Little Things, a new drama next Wednesday on ABC. Texas Aggies are ready for the biggest challenge of the season when they travel to Tuscaloosa to take on number one ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. The defending national champs are averaging 57 points a game coming off their 62-7 victory over Mississippi last weekend. But the Aggie offense has also improved behind quarterback Kellen Mond out of Reagan High School. He's already thrown for 824 yards and six touchdowns with no interceptions. The last time the Aggies beat Alabama is when Johnny Football was on a roll his freshman year in 2012 and later won the Heisman Trophy. Now the Aggies' mantra against the Crimson Tide is it's not about Alabama, it's about a and in their SEC opener. I feel like it's a challenge that we've all been waiting for, but, you know, you can't really get ahead of yourself. You know, got to look at it as a, they're just another opponent. You can't really make it about them because it's about us. I think we're just confident in ourselves. There's a different uh, mentality this year and, and the way that we feel about ourselves going to these games. It's going to Alabama this week, just another team, going fully expecting to win the game. I mean, there's not really a, a secret to it or anything. It's just going in, playing another game, and, and uh, you know, it's a football game. Whatever happens, happens. All right. Like the Aggies, the Texas Longhorns also have difficult conference opener when they host 17th ranked TCU in their first Big 12 game of 2018. The Horns have newfound confidence in both sides of the ball following their 37-14 route of USC, who claimed up until that game the school was 5-0 against Texas, ignoring the 2005 national championship comeback due to an NCAA penalty. The Horn Frogs are coming out their first loss of the season, 40-28 defeat at the hands of Ohio State in the Cowboys' AT&T Stadium. And the Horns have lost their last four straight games against TCU, but that losing streak against the Horn Frogs is not what motivates Texas. The motivation of the, the previous four, it, it's really, it's inconsequential. You know, they, they care about this year, and, and they, they care about this week, and they care about going 1-0 this week, and that's all the motivation they need, really. Kickoff in Austin on Saturday is set for 3.30. The UTSA Roadrunners are looking for their first win of the season when they host Texas State Bobcats this Saturday night in the Alamo Dome in the HEB I-35 rivalry, especially since the Roadrunners open Conference USA play one week from this Saturday when they host UTEP inside the Alamo Dome. Roadrunners are 0-3 coming into this game with losses to Arizona State, Baylor, and home, and Kansas State in Manhattan. But they can all change. That can all change Saturday night when they face the Bobcats for the third time in school history, winning the past two contests, 38-31 in the Dome in 2012, and last year, 44-4 in San Marcos. The motivation for the Roadrunners this Saturday night is not their 0-3 standing. Probably 0-3 is enough to put a, a burn in your belly, to fire us up enough uh, that uh, we're better, we're capable. And so uh, that elusive first win is, is, is what's dangled in front of us more than even an opponent. They just happen to be the team we're playing in the quest to get our first win. So win is all that matters right now for UTSA. Kickoff in Alamo Dome this Saturday is set for 6 p.m. And here's a look at the fan information. It's called the Stripe Out Game, and they want the fans to wear certain colors in those sections. Blue for those first sections in the even, orange for the odd sections. And Via Park and Ride will be running because they expect a l large crowd because it's such a close school to UTSA. And they'll have the main campus, Crossroads, and the Madla Transit Center underway for $2.50 each way. So it gets you to the game safely and gets you home. Mm -hmm. Should be a fun one. It should. Thanks, Greg.
Still to come at six, a historic home on the move in North Texas today. Who stepped in to save the almost 150 year old home when the city of Plano decided not to? And Democratic and Republican lawmakers choosing sides in the Supreme Court showdown playing out in the nation's capital. What lawmakers say they need to do to get to the truth and a vote on Judge Brett Kavanaugh next at six. The one debate before Election Day, current Republican Governor of Texas Greg Abbott versus Democratic nominee and four-time Dallas County Sheriff Lupe Valdez. Friday, September 28th at 7 p.m. The Texas Governor's Debate, live from Austin on KSAT and KSAT.com. Four years ago, I made some big promises, and I worked every day to keep them. Here in Texas, jobs are booming, wages are rising, and unemployment hit record lows. Schools are stronger. High school graduation rates are at all-time highs. Families are safer. We're locking up thousands of dangerous gang members. We've achieved a lot. Now I'll promise you one more thing. We're just getting started. Tonight, it's the Goldbergs, American Housewife, and Modern Family. At 9, Shark Tank, and the Night Beat at 10. to save 25 to 35 percent store-wide during Facet's anniversary sale. Even Democrats don't trust Gina Ortiz-Jones because when it comes to our local economy, here is what her fellow Democrat had to say about her support of BRAC that will close vital military bases. When I heard Gina say yes, she would support a third round of BRAC, I was really surprised because it, it is unimaginable to me that anybody who wants to represent this district would ever be for BRAC. <laughs> It's like playing Russian roulette with people's jobs. Gina Ortiz Jones and her plan will hurt our local communities and put our national security at risk. Will Hurd has served alongside our brave men and women overseas and here at home. He will never gamble with the jobs of our nation's heroes or our children's safety. Will Hurd works every day to strengthen our economy and keep these vital military bases open. I'm Will Hurd, and I approve this message. Meet Gina Ortiz Jones. Here's her home in Washington, D.C., just blocks from where Nancy Pelosi funnels money to Jones's campaign. Down the street, Jones collects cash from Washington special interests, putting their agenda before Texas. And here's Washington National Airport, where Gina Ortiz Jones catches a plane for a quick visit to Texas to pander for your vote. Gina Ortiz Jones, she's Washington's candidate, not ours. NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Why would someone with so much choose to leave it all behind? This doesn't add up. Maybe John's death is a wake-up call. Here comes the rest of To John. To John. A Million Little Things. A new drama next Wednesday on ABC. You could win 50 at 5. We are Circle K's Secret Word of the Day on KSAT's News at 5. The nomination of Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the U.S. Supreme Court is playing out in the Senate and the politics are fierce. Now that Kavanaugh's accuser and Democrats have asked for an FBI investigation before any hearing, Republicans and Democrats are taking side. ABC's Lana Zak is in Washington. Questions. The chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Chuck Grassley, says he still hopes Dr. Christine Blasey Ford will testify on Monday. We're not going to cancel any hearing until the last minute I don't know what the last minute is, but until the last minute, in hopes that she'll take us up. The Washington Post first reported Blasey Ford's allegation that as a stumbling drunk teen in the 1980s, Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her while both were high school students. Kavanaugh strongly denies the allegation, but others have found it credible. I believe what she said. And now the Senate is divided. Should they hold a vote or press the pause button? We've got a deadline of October 1. That's when the Supreme Court starts, and I, I, I think we ought to meet it. This nomination has been pushed and pushed and pushed with artificial deadlines. Democrats still stung by Republicans refusing to even meet with Merrick Garland, President Obama's nominee in 2016, are upset that Republicans are now rushing to get Kavanaugh's confirmation done before the midterm election. President Trump today urging both patience and speed. I want to give it all the time they need 
They've already given it time. They've delayed a major hearing. And for the first time, he seemed to suggest Kavanaugh's nomination could be in jeopardy. If she shows up and makes a credible showing, that'll be very interesting and we'll have to make a decision. And Senator Grassley says that Dr. Blasey Ford can testify in public or in private, and he's even offered to send staffers out to California to meet with her. Lana Zak, ABC News, Washington. Workers in North Texas having a little trouble moving the oldest home in Plano to its new location. The Collingwood House on its way to the Haggard Farm this morning. The Haggard family bought the house to save it from being dismantled by the city after the city decided not to try and save it. One group raised half a million dollars to renovate the home and keep it where it was on 124 acres between mm -hmm. Spring Creek and the North Dallas Tollway, but it was eventually decided that that was not going to happen. Today's move hit a couple of snags. The house hit a street light and got stuck for a little bit, but otherwise went relatively smoothly. The Collingwood House was built back in 1861. <laughs> The group San Antonio for Growth on the East Side, or SAGE, held its quarterly meeting with updates focused on East Side growth. One of the key points, the more than $27 million for infrastructure improvements in District 2, and how that investment will support long-term residential and business growth. Sarah Acosta has the story. 30% occupancy now filled at the newly opened Baldwin apartment building on Crockett Street. Continued growth next door at the Vidora condos and even the first Starbucks opening on the east side. All exciting news for east side business owners. A lot of development moving forward, uh, a lot of internal growth as well. Um, we're cleaning up a, a lot of vacant lots. Uh, a lot of people are realizing how important District 2 is to the city. District 2 Councilman Shaw says he's excited about the 300 jobs coming to the east side, filling up a warehouse like this. This one, an HEB distribution center right here on Foster Road in I-10. Architect Andrew Douglas brought his firm to the east side five years ago because he believes in that growth. He says residential growth in St. Paul Square has lots of potential and says they hope the area will become like the Pearl. St. Paul Square has recently been uh, acquired by Rialto Real Estate and they're looking to in infuse quite a bit of new retail in the area, start adding new venues uh, and really make it a, a node within the downtown very analogous to what's happened at Pearl. Shaw says they are also working with the city on a pilot program to make vacant lots on the east side more affordable by eliminating property titles and liens. From the east side, Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Still ahead, old school gamers will most likely be lining up to get their hands on this, the PlayStation Classic when Sony is planning to have the version of the console in stores still to come. And why exercise could help kids who are having trouble with their schoolwork. That's next at 6. Never ever pay your full deductible. Choose Miracle Body and Paint. We discount deductibles. Ford builds a good vehicle. The EcoBoost, I'd have to say number one. I like the power. It's great on gas, and I do a lot of driving. I feel like I've gotten the best for my money. The Ford Sync, I use it all the time. I can connect with my phone. I use a lot of music apps, GPS, the navigation. Ford being the best in Texas, that's huge. I mean, it matters. Now get 0% financing plus 3,500 total cash on 2018 Edge and Explorer. Ford is the best in Texas. A West Point graduate, Joseph Kopser served 20 years in the military, two combat tours in Iraq. Returning home, Kopser founded a successful technology company, creating Texas jobs, and helped build a nonprofit for other veterans to start their own businesses. Joseph Kopser. I've crossed oceans and deserts to defend our country. Believe me, I can cross an aisle if that's what it takes to solve our problems in Washington. And I'm not afraid to stand up to leaders in both parties to do it. I'm Joseph Kopser. And I approve this message. Save big with our truck month event and take home a Titan or Frontier from Nissan of Bernie. Drive off today and save up to $6,000 off MSRP on a Frontier or $14,000 off MSRP on a Titan. Hurry into Nissan of Bernie today. The perfect bed is your personal oasis, a reflection of your style and needs. That's why Lewis Shanks offers an infinite selection of fine home furnishings in every style. Visit our custom design center where you can customize something that perfectly fits you. Or partner with one of our experienced designers to help make your dream home a reality. Room by room or one piece at a time. Lewis Shanks Furniture. We live to help you love where you live. Big Game Coverage, powered by Ram Trucks.
built to serve. Today we're here to talk about trucks. I love trucks. Wow. What truck brand comes from the family of the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickups on the road? I think it's the Chevy. Ford. It's not Ford. I think it's Ram. It's not Ram either. That's it's Chevy. Chevy. Gorgeous. Get a total value of $82.50 on this Silverado Texas edition. Plus, trade up and get an additional $32.50 total cash allowance when you finance with GM Financial. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. My bosses are the 800,000 people that I represent. Uh, not exactly. Here's how Will Hurd plays it in Washington. Hurd took over $40,000 in campaign cash from the big drug companies and voted for the Washington Republican corporate tax handout, giving the five largest drug companies a $42.7 billion tax cut, while prescription drug costs continue to rise. Washington Will, he's not working for us. Women Vote is responsible for the content of this advertising. We all know the importance of kids getting enough exercise. Staying active helps them burn off steam and keep fit. But a little exercise could also help a child struggling in school. As Courtney Friedman explains, being active isn't just good for the body, it can also improve cognitive function. Being active isn't just for adults. With childhood obesity still a major concern in the U.S., groups like the National Association of Physical Literacy stress the importance of teaching kids to stay active, whether at home or at school, so they can incorporate a healthy lifestyle well into adulthood. According to an associate clinical professor at Harvard, activity breaks during the day can help students become better learners because of the impact of movement on their brain. A recent study published in the journal Pediatrics surveyed more than 10,000 kids between the ages of 4 and 13. The study found that children who get extra physical activity while at school do better in reading and math. The research not only shows that being active can help kids with cognitive function, it can also help with behavioral issues. The chief wellness officer for the National Association of Physical Literacy says if kids are able to get up and move around, they're not going to have so much energy that they disrupt class or their classmates. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Look outside with live cam this evening. Adam, you've told us there's some rain out there, but we got some more to come, huh? We do. It's just very isolated at the moment, especially on the west side of town. We're seeing a few downpours are on the radar screen. West side of town there, southwest side as well, getting that action. Otherwise, temperature right now, 88 degrees at the airport. We'll be falling through the 80s this evening. And other than a few of these isolated thunderstorms that we have, partly cloudy conditions, but more widespread rain in the forecast. We'll talk about that coming up. Do you have an ugly situation like a problem rent house? Repair issues? An inheritance? Back taxes or divorce? Hi, San Antonio. We're home investors. The We Buy Ugly Houses people. Don't fix it, sell it. Call us today at 1 800 44 B U Y E R. Today we're here to talk about trucks. I love trucks. Oh. What truck brand comes from the family of the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickups on the road? I think it's the Chevy. Ford. It's not Ford. I think it's Ram. It's not Ram either. That's it's Chevy. Chevy. Gorgeous. Get a total value of $8,250 on this Silverado Texas edition. Plus, trade up and get an additional $3,250 total cash allowance when you finance with GM Financial. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. capability and the confidence to go where you've never gone before it's more than just a test drive it's your first adventure that was awesome started off with a great deal at the jeep adventure days event now get three thousand dollars cash allowance on the 2019 jeep cherokee and texas residents get these additional offers these are the faces of the more than 300,000 people in this part of texas who could lose their health care coverage because they have a pre-existing condition 
or will no longer be able to afford their premium. All because Will Hurd put politics before us when he voted eight times to repeal the Affordable Care Act. I'm Gina Ortiz-Jones. I approve this message, and I will never put politics before you. And today, the aquifer is up 28.7 feet since Labor Day, still rising. As for the pollen count, mold very high at over 16,000 ragweed, pigweed low. Escalade reviews are in. Texas residents get this low mileage lease on this Cadillac Escalade from around $7.99 per month. Visit your San Antonio Cadillac dealer today. Today, it looks like Sony is getting ready to take gamers back in time. The company is bringing back its original PlayStation, but with a twist. The new miniaturized version will be called PlayStation Classic and will come preloaded with 20 classic titles. Yeah, including fan favorites like Final Fantasy VII and Tekken 3. PlayStation Classic will go on sale December 3rd, right in time for Christmas, and will cost around $100. This is not the first time a classic console has been brought back in miniature form. Nintendo's Classic Edition was introduced in 2016. All right, today is the day, you guys. <laughs> There's a reason a lot of people have to wear eye patches, sports stuffed parrots, and other buccaneer trappings. It is international talk like a pirate day. It's not too late to work in phrases like R and aye aye captain into conversation. Adam Kasky's already done it. He's already turned his back on this story. Here's a little history. <laughs> talk like a pirate day was created in 1995 by John Barr and Mark Summers, also known as Old Chum Bucket and Cap'n Slappy, whoever they are. It packed up, uh, picked up steam in the early 2000s, thanks in part to Dave Barry, a nationally syndicated columnist who apparently really liked it. Now you can even set your Facebook settings to the language so you can speak in pirate to everyone. And disclaimer, that was sarcasm. There is no way Adam Kasky has said aye aye captain or R. I, I missed that whole today. story. I was working on things. I don't even know what you're talking <laughs> about. Very busy. Very attention. busy in the weather yeah. center. And, yep. But hey, it's time for weather, so you're here. Boom. Thanks Let's for do being this. here. <laughs> My pleasure. Take it away. We actually have a little thunderstorm out there right now. <laughs> What's the plank? Town. <laughs> hey. Oh, boy. All right, so we do have a thunderstorm off to the west, and it's not a big deal. It's just a good downpour on the west side of town, straddling Bear County, even on into Medina County there. And we'll take a closer look at this activity, and it's highly isolated. Uh, not much else. Now, we do have one little popper just to the basically near Leon Valley and southwest of there, but one thunderstorm right here, one little pocket of it, south of Casterville has a decent amount of lightning associated with it right now, whereas the main batch is starting to fizzle out a little bit. It's losing a bit of its kick and uh, still some decent rainfall with it, but it's starting to weaken. These are pretty short-lived. Around 410, just south of Bandera Road, that's where we have uh, this downpour right along 410. Ingram, 410 and Ingram, 410, you know, Wurzbach around here, and Calabria as well. That's where the downpour is currently at this time. So a few little soakers out there, but not much more than that. Not a whole lot of activity. Off to the west, closer to Brackettville, we have a few pockets of rain as well. West of Uvalde, between Uvalde and Brackettville, pushing northward, a little bit of action. Down to the south, see another round moving toward Freer, but this is starting to dissipate as well and likely will as it moves into McMullen County. So here's the wider view and actually a lot of well, sunshine throughout the day today. Some high clouds coming in from the west. That's already a result of that Pacific moisture that's going to be increasing in our atmosphere over the coming days. So here's a look at our time lapse and fair weather clouds most of the day. The skies get darker here because of those showers on the west side of town toward the end of that time lapse. 88 degrees at the moment, so we're down one degree from our high temperature. And today was an average day temperature wise in terms of highs. Morning lows were above average and morning lows will be that way because there's so much humidity in the air. The temperature just can't fall off that much. So locally, we're 90 in Holotus, 88 Castroville. Castroville, you're likely to drop off quickly with that shower moving your way. 90 in New Braunfels Canyon Lake now. 
at 87 degrees. Generally 80s to low 90s across the state and even some 90s stretching all the way up into the central plains. The heat is pushed northward as we've got the heat high to the north of us, basically right over Springfield, Missouri at this time. So they're seeing temperatures in the lower 90s, but that's going to be breaking down and the pattern's going to be changing and shifting here momentarily. So look at the activity now. Texas, for the most part, well, especially the past couple of days, was kind of shielded from the rain. Now it's being arced up and around us into parts of the desert southwest and even Colorado. The moisture shown on the water vapor imagery here stretches from the Pacific and parts of Mexico all the way up into the four corners and even the upper Midwest there. Well, as the upper level high moves out of the way, we're going to see more of this moisture increasing over South Texas, and that's going to increase the downpour potential because we'll have the energy coming in with this dip in the upper level flow as early as tomorrow morning, a few isolated showers possible. A better chance, so just scattered activity by tomorrow afternoon and evening, some lightning and thunder possible, embedded downpours, and then by Friday and Saturday, we're not expecting continuous rainfall. There'll be breaks in the rain, so intermittent or periods of rain, but when it's raining, we'll probably have some downpours because of the high moisture content with that added uh, Pacific moisture that's moving into town. So when it rains, it pours. That's what's in the forecast, but it's not continuous. So we'll be able to get outside and get some things done in between the rain. There are those rain chances. They peak Friday and Saturday at 60%. Otherwise, tomorrow we'll start the day at about 20% and then going up to 40%. 75 in the morning, 88 in the afternoon, mid 80s, Friday all the way through the weekend. And more rain. <laughs> more green on yeah. the way after the rain. That's the good thing. And you would imagine at some point SAWS is going to pull back on those restrictions now that we're so far up on the aquifer. I would think so, but it, you know, you can't always predict what they're yeah. going yeah. to do. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Adam. We'll be right back. It's Nissan's Take Home a Titan Truck Month. The best time to take home big savings on our tech-filled family of trucks and SUVs, including Titan, Frontier, and Armada. Get to Nissan's Take Home a Titan Truck Month and take home big savings. Save up to $13,691 on the 2018 Texas Titan or get a low $399 per month lease on Armada. Hurry, truck month ends soon. Excuse me, this bill is almost double what I was expecting. Well, it covers all your work, and then some. Then some? Like office supplies. Those are fish. Well, I'm off to the club. Then some? Okay, let's try something new. And here's your statement. I could hug you. Bring it in. At Aspen Dental, we're a different kind of dentist. Not covered by insurance? Get a free new patient exam. Schedule online or call 1-800-ASPEN-DENTAL. If you were going to design your perfect car, which three features would you choose? Safety with the kids. Fuel efficiency. Affordable price. My dream car would have all of these things. What if I told you that there was a car that did have everything? Serious? Okay. This is the Chevy Cruze. Go Chevy. Get $2,250 cash allowance on most Cruze and Malibu models. Plus, trade up and get an additional $1,500 total cash allowance when you finance with GM Financial. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. We take care of you night and day with three 24-hour locations. Texas Med Clinic Urgent Care. We treat you well. Meet Gina Ortiz Jones. Here's her home in Washington, D.C. Just blocks from where Nancy Pelosi funnels money to Jones's campaign. Down the street, Jones collects cash from Washington special interests, putting their agenda before Texas. And here's Washington National Airport, where Gina Ortiz Jones catches a plane for a quick visit to Texas to pander for your vote. Gina Ortiz Jones. She's Washington's candidate, not ours. NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Why bother mastering something? Why test a hybrid engine for over 6 million miles? Why hand tune an audio system? Why include the most advanced active safety system in its class, standard? Because when you want to create an entirely new feeling, the difference between excellence and mastery is all the difference in the world. Introducing the all-new Lexus ES. Every curve, every innovation, every feeling. A product of mastery. See North Park Lexus of San Antonio and North Park Lexus at Dominion. 
Why would someone with so much choose to leave it all behind? This doesn't add up. Maybe John's death is a wake-up call. Here comes the rest of the To John. To John. A Million Little Things. A new drama next Wednesday on ABC. Here's today's In Case You Missed It. It's Wednesday, September 19th. Cody Wilson, the founder of Defense Distributed, has been charged with sexual assault. According to KVU in Austin, he's accused of having sex at a hotel with an underage girl for $500. The girl told Austin police that she created a profile on SugarDaddy.com. KVU says Austin police told them Wilson used the name San Hero on the website before meeting up with the girl in August. Many Republicans now pushing Brett Kavanaugh's accuser, Christine Blasey Ford, to testify on Capitol Hill on Monday, despite her demand for an FBI investigation first. Yeah, they say there's no reason for an investigation and no reason to delay his confirmation any longer. If the accuser is not going to testify, there is no reason for a further delay. One month later, the physical and emotional pain is still unbearable, but the man who tried to save his mother from their burning apartment is trying to, uh, to heal. It happened at the Ashler Oaks Complex off of Parkdale and Data Point. Jesse Wadley sat down to talk about his own injuries and how he's dealing dealing with loss and what comes next. She was my responsibility and I couldn't, I couldn't get to her. This is what I killed on Monday and several wrote back, no, you did not do that. And I said, yes, I did do that. Back here to Texas, the town of Livingston be, may well be north of Houston, but they might have some of the toughest leadership in Texas. His white haired mayor may look like a typical grandmother, but this bad Nana just shot a 12 foot alligator. One shot in the head and he just went under, don't mess with Nana. Today we're here to talk about trucks. I love trucks. Well, what truck brand comes from the family of the most dependable, longest lasting full-size pickups on the road? I think it's the Chevy. Ford. It's not Ford. I think it's Ram. It's not Ram either. That's it's Chevy. Chevy. Gorgeous. Get a total value of $8,250 on this Silverado Texas edition. Plus, trade up and get an additional $3,250 total cash allowance when you finance with GM Financial. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. Ulysses, his sister Molly, Henry, who's seven. I want to be there with them, but more importantly, I want to anticipate the question that they're going to ask me in the years to come. When everything that mattered to us was on the line, where were you? Let's meet the pettiness, the bigotry, the anxiety that dominates so much of national life today with a courage, a strength, a big heart that could only be born of Texas. I'm Beto O'Rourke, and I approve this message. Construction sale prices on every new Nissan. You won't find any better. You working hard? You bet. During our construction sale, buy this 2018 Sentra S for just $13,765. Or buy this 2018 Rogue S for just $20,988. It's pizza month. And when you buy from Ansira, you get CZs for the rest of the year. Ansira Nissan on I-10 West between Wurzbach and Heidner. Come to Daddy's work. They should if they want a low Ansira Nissan price. to the big screen TV of your dreams. From a cozy new mattress to a comfy new sofa, Cons Home Plus is the smart way to shop with low monthly payments tailored to you. Whether you've got good credit or no credit at all, you can make it happen at Cons Home Plus. You want a better life and a better Step up to GMC with nearly 10,200 total value on this specially equipped GMC Sierra SLT. See your San Antonio area GMC dealers. The bus drivers love the um, propane buses because they're quieter than the diesel. A brand new fleet of buses and SAISD didn't pay a penny for them. So we'll have 18 propane buses. I'm Courtney Friedman and coming up tonight on the Night Beat, how these propane buses are saving the district's money and helping the environment. Because as they board the bus, they're not going to have those heavy fumes there that they would have with other school buses.
here's a look at the pockets of rain left over still on the west side, even around Leon Valley and pushing toward Holotus. A few little downpours, even Leon Springs just had one pop up uh, around Leon Springs along I-10 there. Otherwise, moving into Castroville, and this activity is generally falling apart. A few other pockets across South Texas, but it's limited and partly cloudy otherwise this evening. A few isolated showers possible in the morning, better chance, so more scattered activity by the afternoon and evening tomorrow. 75 in the morning, 88 by the afternoon, and very humid still. Mm -hmm. A lot of moisture in the air Friday, Saturday, so we'll have intermittent areas of rain moving through South Texas, but it's not going to be a continuous rain when it does rain. It could be coming down pretty hard at times. I feel like we're all ready to just sort of be wrung out <laughs> at this point. Yeah, feels it's like it. Wait a while. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you back here for the night beat tonight at 10. Have